This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, January 14th, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In a moment, we will have Swedish strength coach Magnus Agren in the Finis Monitor. This day works out great because usually we have a dry land exercise of the week on Thursday, so we'll cover all that in the interview. Magnus Agren is famous in Sweden for training, uh, training high-profile athletes like swimmer Stefan Nystrand. And Magnus joins us in the Finis Monitor right now from Stockholm. Magnus, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, tell us about your background. Uh, other than Stefan Nystrand, how many swimmers have you trained? Do you just train athletes from all different sports? Oh, how many swimmers? Uh, I, swim, I train a lot of swimmers, but I can't really count them at the moment. Let's say about 10 elite swimmers. And I have also athletes in different sports as ice hockey, soccer, golf, tennis, and so on. So it's quite a few that training. Okay, so how, does, how is training a swimmer? What do you do specifically when you're working with a, a swimmer? It depends a bit on how the swimmer looks, it's, if it's muscular or is it's more slim swimmer. But generally, I try to make him stronger. So his own weight will be relatively lighter so he can move faster in the water. Very easy summoned. How long have you worked with Stefan, and what do you do specifically for him? Uh, I started working with him after the Sydney Olympics, and the first couple of years we worked mainly with neuromuscular strength, uh, relative strength, and absolute strength to get him stronger. Uh, since the new swimsuit came, we had to make him a bit heavier. Get, get, he had to gain a lot of muscles, so last year we focused more on muscle training, so to speak. So we have to see now what we can, are going to do now when the new swimsuits are gone, and so on, so maybe, what, no, yeah, sorry. What do you mean muscle training exactly? Does that mean uh, More hypertrophy. Less, yeah, high weight, less repetition, that kind of stuff? No, uh, actually, that's the thing we mostly trained before, but uh, last spring we worked a lot of more like bodybuilding training, so to speak. We do more hypertrophy, uh, 8 to 12 reps and stuff like that. Okay. What is Stefan, I mean, what is he like in the gym? Is he, is he very strong? Is he strong in some ways, but not so much in others? Kind of describe him from that aspect. I would say he's quite strong. He can always be stronger, but uh, he, I don't know if you know the terms now, but he's very fast to twitch. So you ha always have to work on his explosive part. You can't work too much on his endurance in strength training. So th then he becomes... Uh, slower, so he's quite strong for his body weight. Yeah. So with a swimmer, I imagine there has to be some sort of limitation on how big and muscular they can get, or else it conflicts with the, you know, dynamics of uh, you know the aerodynamics. Um, yeah. You know, in the water. So I mean, how do you work on keeping them lean but making them the what is the ideal strength, I guess, for a swimmer? Ooh, the ideal strength is hard to say, but as you said, you have to keep them relatively light, but at the same time, you have to have muscles on the body. So the main thing to train for a sprint swimmer, swimmer is relative strength. So he exactly he so he lifts more weight relative to his weight all the time. Uh, how will training swimmers be different now that they can't wear those? high-tech suits. They have to go back to basically wearing the suits they wore in the 1990s. Yeah, I believe the swimmers will be a little bit smaller again because when you have the, oldest, uh, the, the old suits now, you could be a little bit bigger and still float on top of the water. So I believe they're going to be a little bit smaller again. What are some, um, you know, on Thursdays we usually do our kind of dry land exercise of the week here. What's kind of a, an original, unique exercise that you do with your athletes? Ooh, we're quite boring. We use a lot of pull-ups, chins, dips, and Olympic lifting. So we don't do any fancy work, so to speak. What is just one? If if I were walking on to uh, walking into your gym, and uh, yeah. I'm a swimmer, and I've got maybe 20 or 30 minutes before swim practice. Uh, what what's a good um, circuit you could put me through, or just how would I best spend my 20 minutes with you before hitting the pool? I will start you off with some Olympic lifting, like uh, uh, ooh, I don't 
forget their English name right now. I come back to it. But after that, I go to gyms and I do some dips for you, like three to four sets, depending on what what quality I want to train. I use would use let's say six to twelve reps for an average swimmer uh, with weights, of course. Um, first exercise would be clean. Yeah, the clean. Do you, you know the term clean? Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, th- that would be the first exercise for the whole body. Then chins, dips, and finish off with some core exercises. Okay, so a lot of the a lot of the core stuff for your stomach, dips, which really work. You know, like your triceps, yeah. another really important muscle for swimmers. Yeah. And yeah. then even like cleans, like full body stuff to you know that get your legs involved as well. Yeah, you need the legs involved in the starts and in the turns. So. It, the more explosive you can be, the faster you're going to be off the starting block, so to speak. Well, Magnus, thank you so much for joining us from Stockholm today, uh, trying something different here on the Morning Swim Show. We appreciate yeah. you giving us your insight. No problem. Okay, that's Magnus Egren joining us from Stockholm, Sweden, train Stefan Nystrand. And that is it for Thanks. the show today. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.